Hey guys, it's you Collector here with another figure review, another McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse figure. A few people have asked me to actually do a review of this guy because there wasn't one. Um, I think there's probably a couple of them now, but I thought, you know what, it's Batman Day, why not put a video together of this? So I found one down when I was down in SoCal, you would have seen it in one of my hunt videos, if you watched any of those hunt videos. I actually found one at a Target there, it went to my buddy Spawn XT209, he's a massive McFarlane Toys fan, he gets, um, all, he's getting all the DC figures and everything, you should see his McFarlane collection, it is just in, absolutely insane. So it went to him. So um, when I came back home, I actually, um, from Denver, when I came back home, I actually went into Target and I found two of these guys and a Baroness. So if you saw my uh, Denver Part 2 toy hunt, spoiler, at the very end, you'll see um, that I find this along with Baroness. So I picked one up for myself um, cause, so I could review for you guys because a few of you guys have actually specifically requested that I review this. So as you can see down at the bottom, it says Azrael and Batman Armor. Um, so here on the side, you see Azrael, Batman Armor, Batman Curse of the White Knight. Here on the back of the package, we actually have a look at Azrael kind of attacking Batman right there. So that actually looks pretty awesome. I really like the way that came out looking. And then the interesting thing is here, you see all the DC, um, the Dark Knight's metal figures or well, characters. It's all the artwork, not the actual figures themselves. So that's pretty cool that they included that there. But enough of that, let's get this thing opened and take a better look. Okay, so here's the Asriel figure out of the package, and um, it's pretty good. The only accessory that he comes with is actually the sword. What really would have set this off is if they had like a flame effect that could attach to the sword to make it look like it was actually on fire, which was in the comics. That would have been pretty cool. Now, this figure looks pretty awesome from the top half. The bottom half, just like with some of the other DC Multiverse figures, um, he skipped leg day. The, the legs are very skinny, and I think proportionately it just looks a little odd for my liking. But again, overall, aesthetically, the figure does look really good. Now, I'm not familiar with the storyline. I hardly know anything about DC Comics to begin with. Uh, but we can talk about the figure itself. So let's zoom in close and look at the cool details that we have on this figure. The little bit of paint that is there that is done very nicely, by the way. Um, um, we'll look at the accessory and then we'll kind of go over the articulation and go from there. Okay, so first up is the sword. The sword looks very nice. We get some gold and red paint in there for the hilt, and then the blade is done with a nice silver paint, so that is nice. But we have to be careful because some of my gold paint is actually chipping off of there on the hilt because he can really only hold the sword in his right hand, and it's tight in there, so you want, might have to warm it up to kind of loosen up uh, the claws in there, but it, when putting the sword in his hand, it kind of scraped off some of that paint. And the way this open hand is, I mean, technically, Yes, he can hold the sword in this hand. However, it's, you know, it's not really meant to for him to hold it because it just sits in there kind of loose. But I guess technically he could. So um, that is the only accessory. Taking a better look at the figure. Again, it looks awesome. It just looks really, really nice. I really like the sculpted details of everything as far as the suit and armor. It all looks really, really nice. And again, the little bit of paint that we have is all applied nicely. So the gold that you see on the shoulders there, the bat logo there, the armor piece and the, the utility belt wraps around. That's all done uh, nicely here on the left leg all looks really good the silver for these spike parts right there on the gauntlet piece a little bit of gold there and then the silver on the gloves for those claws um, also look really good and that's on both hands as you can see there came out very clean very nice you get a little bit of red for the eyes so that's it for the paint but again it's done uh, quite nicely but then when you start to look at the bottom of the figure he, he's very top heavy and then the Azrael figure was kind of the same way so I guess that, you know that makes sense but then when you start to go down his legs just get really really skinny and it's kind of odd kind of how these ankles are so there's some weird things and we'll talk about that you know as we look at the articulation but aesthetically overall again it does look really good it's just i don't know why the legs just seem so small it's just kind of weird to me but the details and everything in the suit look really good the cape looks really good as well and um, it's a rubber piece it's it's pretty thin so i kind of like that so it's pliable you know you can't shape it in any way and it won't um hold form or anything but it does look uh really really nice look at the detail right there even the spikes all just looks really good so let's zoom out for that articulation 
Okay, so for the articulation, Batman, he can't really look down, or Azrael, he can't really look down, but he can look up somewhat. I just poked the hell out of my finger with these um, these bat ears. Damn, those are those are pretty pretty pointy. Uh, so again, he's not really going to look down. You can get some side-to-side -side motion. You're not going to get a full turn because there's a collar piece. You just kind of have to make it go up over the collar, but you could do it, and you get some pivot in there, so that is pretty good. The arms... Let's talk about that. Hold on. Okay, I'm sure you guys are still holding on. So I tr tried to gently lift up this arm and this one fell apart too. So, um, stand by. Okay, so let's let's talk about this. These came out very easily. And I, you know, the first one, I, I probably did a little too much force, sure. Um, the right arm, I did not use a lot of force. So here's a problem that we're gonna have with this figure. Um, this ball joint right there, the ratcheting of it is extremely tight. It's really bad, as you can see. Tr just trying to be able to move that arm. I had moved it a little bit, but I'm stressing the hell out of the plastic already. So that's that's that, that's a really bad sign. So e either you're just going to move the arms up and down and not bring them out at all, or warm it up and maybe that will. We'll get it to work, but that, that's that's pretty bad. That's the left. That's the one where I use a lot of force and really popped out and may have broken. It. I don't really know yet. So on the right one, it's stiff, not as bad. So this one isn't so bad. But again, I was gentle in trying to lift this arm up, and it still just popped out all crazy like. So this one is a definite problem. I'm gonna warm that up. We'll see if that helps. Okay, so some warm water really helped out. Look at that. Ratcheting is really good to go now. So um, I, I hate when you have to do that with figures. I don't feel like that's something that you should have to do. So NECA, I know you have to do that. Um, with McFarlane toys, I didn't think that was something that you would have to do. Um, but anyway, now comes the, the fun part of trying to piece this thing uh, back together. So I put the round part in there. Let's see if I can pop this shoulder arm right up. Oh, just pops right on in. So that is a good sign. So we'll just kind of... See, there's a triangle that points down. I'm assuming that means that part should be down. So let's see. We're going to place that right back on in there. And we're going to pop that arm. Okay, so we're getting there. We're kind of good. But the shoulder armor piece is on a ball peg. And it just ports right on in there. So nothing's broken, thankfully. Look at that. Look at that. We are back to normal. Good to go. So articulation wise you know I may have popped some of the pot, some of the glue off on that shoulder right there so that's definitely up higher than it was before um, but anyway so there's that butterfly joint in there so that is cool forward back um, the arm you're gonna get out that high but this shoulder piece is really going to get in the way with that and then these blades on the gauntlet really uh, get in the way so just be aware of that you can't do a full I don't know now that seems really loose now maybe maybe that's maybe that's how it was supposed to be but that might be a problem so just be careful with yours um, with what you do. There is an upper bicep swivel in there. We get a single jointed elbow, so not even close to 90 degrees on there. So it's a little lacking on the elbows. So I've noticed that with the DC Multiverse, we, we need double jointed elbows. The single jointed elbows just aren't that great. We get a wrist swivel. It's done on like a ball peg um, there. So you get the, the swivel going that way. If you turn that ball peg swivel, then you can, and you turn the hand, then you can get the, the, the hinge going the other way for the hand. So there's the added benefit, but aesthetically, I don't like the way the ball looks on those joints. So just a heads up there. The upper torso, we get a rocker, so we can tilt to the side, tilt to the other side a little bit as well. You're not really gonna get any forward motion. You get a little back motion, but the cape is really gonna hit the body. So you don't get a whole lot of movement going on in there, but you do get a nice twist action there on that diaphragm joint. Now the second part is on another rocker. So you can do even more craziness with that lower torso rocker there. So that is pretty good. And that also has its own swivel so you could turn that part and the upper part so each torso piece um, is independent of each other which can look a little bit weird uh, the legs go out that far apart now this hip joint has like a rubberish piece there so there's some give in it when you want to you move the legs out so that is pretty good he can kick forward that much 
you can go out to the side. You get some turn in that upper thigh cut there. As you can see, you can't really get it full rotation, but you can do some. We get a double jointed knee, which works out fairly well. As you can see there, there's no boot swivel or calf swivel, but we get the damn, um, I'll zoom in for that. We get the same uh, ball joint for the ankle. So you can hinge down, hinge up. If you turn that ball and then turn the foot, you can get some pivot going that way. I'm not a fan of this method for uh, foot articulation and ankles. Um, I wish we would have gotten some other form, but that's 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 what we got with the DC Multiverse. Um, aesthetically, it really breaks up the look of it, and I'm not a big fan. Um, we also get toe articulation in there. So I wish we had better ankles um, and then bigger ankles because, again, aesthetically, his legs just get all tiny and everything going on in there. So I just wish the legs were a little bit thicker. Um, the upper thighs are good, but it's just the calves down into the ankles are just really small. Okay, so for a size comparison, the only open McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse figures that I have are the Azrael and Batman armor and the Devastator figure. So side by side, you can see they're both bulky figures, but the Devastator, of course, is a little bit taller and definitely a lot more bulky. Now, this Azrael Batman, I'm a little flustered with it because of what happened with the arms. It's still a very good looking figure. It's just the legs are a little bit weird for me. I do like the articulation in the torso. I really like how that kind of comes together. I wish we would have double jointed elbows though. That would make things a lot better. And then just a little bit bigger legs and a different system for the ankles and the wrists. I'm just not a fan of that ball peg. And I know a lot of imports use it as well. Um, I'm just not the biggest fan of them, but you guys can let me know what your thoughts on that are. You guys let me know what you think of the DC Multiverse line so far. Have you seen this figure? I know it was just recently announced and then all of a sudden, boom, started showing up in Targets. I think Walmart still has a pre-order for sometime in October, maybe even October 1st. So it's pretty crazy how these figures just all of a sudden, boom, are showing up. Like the animated series um, Teen Titans uh, Cyborg, that's already been found in some Walmarts. So it's crazy how fast these are coming out. But you guys let me know down in the comments below what you, how you feel about that figure. If you guys liked the video, please hit that thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already done so, and as always, thank you for watching.